Ladies and gents, before I begin this episode, I just want to send my deepest condolences to the Leicester City family, to the players, to the staff, to the fans, to the families of those who died in the helicopter crash on Saturday. I was watching my Liverpool play and saw the news break. Uh, I know the owner was a loved man and transformed not only the club, but the city itself. I know he, you know, everyone seemed to really think of him so highly. I know he will be missed and it is a very sad time in world football right now. Absolutely amazed to see all of the clubs and all the players, most of which who have had no real connection to Leicester City, but send their support and condolences to the club and to the city. It's absolutely amazing to see the outpouring of affection to this team and this this area. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, so with that somber opening, let's get to this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Milan with me, Sefian FM. Before we get into today's match, I got a couple things to get off my chest. First off, this past weekend was a freaking fantastic weekend for sports. First up, can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah. But later on, yes. I am Boston born, Boston bred. Red Sox it is, baby. What World champions. If you don't know baseball, hey, you're just missing out. But Red Sox win the World Championship, baby. World Series. So anyway, now that that's over, I got a couple things to tell you today. First off, let me get into the schedule. We have been doing really well, I have to admit. Last up, we were Cagliari, the 2-0 win. Follow that up with a 3-0 over Sampdoria. 1-0 over Slavia Prague, a game that this game and the Red Star game didn't matter because we were already in the next stage, and I'll get to that in a second as well. Atalanta, okay, one all draw. These are really only negative side of this entire run right here. Empoli, 3-1, fantastic game. Red Star, 3-0. Torino, 1-0. Udinese, 3-1. I swear to God, look at these games from the horrific Juventus game. One, two, three, four, five goals conceded. That's it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven scored, five conceded. We have been on quite a tear, I have to say. And I do want to show you just a couple of things. So this Torino game, I do want to show you one thing. Ricardo Rodriguez gets a fantastic free kick in the first minute. 50 some odd seconds in and he gets the first goal and that's the only goal. Torino were kind of chasing the game after that. We were basically really trying for them not to to score anything. Did Obviously did a fantastic job. Uh, Maite gets sent off in the 90 plus four. That really doesn't do much. But Caste, Caste, Castillejo injured kind of sucked. Especially because I did not have Halilovic on there. And I was really just kind of moving you know, chess pieces around. But I just want to show you this Rodriguez free kick. Fantastic. Sirigo really should have had it. I think Sirigo was on PSG, wasn't he? Yeah, 2011 to 2016. Oh, he's 31 years old. Um, but yeah, he really should have had that one. But Rodriguez gets one in the 50 some odd seconds. I think it was like 52. And we go into win. The other thing I wanted to show you. I tell you pinball. I, I've mentioned pinball every single time we play. There is no other goal, and sadly it was for them, that epitomizes this pinball spirit. Not really the angle I want to show you. So let's try again. Okay, this is what I want to show you. So Pascal from a corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten or eleven people touch that ball. That's a little crazy. That is that is what I say pinball. That is why I say pinball. So, and then Udine say 3-0, or 3-1. Fantastic. Run of form, I have to say. And now we are at Spal. We are away, so a little more difficult. But Spal, who sit in 19th. So hopefully we can get a win against them. Lazio comes up after that. Bayern Munich in a friendly. Why are we playing Bayern in a friendly? I might have to cancel that. Who the hell scheduled Bayern in a friendly with two days after the Italian first round against 
Cosenza. I mean, I guess technically we could play. I don't know. We'll see. But then Juventus in the Super Cup final. Here we go. Partizan from Serbia is the group or is the first knockout round of the Euro Cup. So that's who we get. Partizan. First up is away and then comes home on the 21st of February. So it won't be in the next episode. Maybe in the one after I'll give you one or both of those. So we'll see. There is one other piece of note that I need to get off my chest. Uh, we do have a transfer. Not coming in for another week or so. I understand that. But this one actually kind of annoys me. I'm, I'm really happy he's coming in. And I'm hoping he's going to, to really boost the squad and do a lot of good stuff for this team. However, he's coming to Milan in real life in January. And not in this game, though. This game did not have him automa or already signing a contract with Milan and coming in. So I went out and bought him. So that's kind of annoying. But if you know Milan, you know who I'm talking about. Lucas Paqueta. Is it pa I Paqueta, I guess? I'm not going to pronounce it that way. But 21-year-old Brazilian midfielder who can also do attacking mids. Uh, looking pretty stacked, I have to say, for a 21-year-old. He, I mean, agility of 15 to 17. I don't have him 100% scouted out. 66. There you go. But, I mean, determination of 18. Flair of 16. Acceleration and pace of 14. Strength and stamina of 14. Not looking too shabby. Just annoying that I had to get him, you know, when he's already coming in. So, I did not get him for all that much. Let's take a look. Uh, Lucas Paqueta. 10 million up front. 20 million over the course of, I think it was like two or three years. But if this is going to be a one-season save, I'm not going to worry about that part. So $10 million up front. The only problem is the wages. $87,000 per week for a 21-year-old. I despise that. Hate it. But that's, I mean, especially he's 4.3K right now. And he's going up to 87. But I really wanted this guy. Again, I knew it was going to be a one-season. Uh, I didn't care really. I, I'm not... Normally, I would say, screw that. I'm not paying you 87k per week. What the hell? But in the save, you know, I'll, I'll suck it up and go for, go with it. So he is coming in on the 3rd of January. Let me just make sure I didn't screw that up. I always screw things up like this. Yeah, joins January 3rd, 2019. I am sorry, I'm an American. It is January 1st, then comes the 3rd, and then 2019. So that is just in a week. Finally, I can get onto this game. So, Spal, we are 2-5 to five favorites. We are 6 there and 19th. Oh, I didn't show that. Yeah, we're in 6th now. So, we can't do anything in this ma uh, match jumping over Napoli. However, you know, in the next couple matches, we are only 10 below Juventus. Uh, so, in a couple of matches, we still have a whole second half of the season to, to, to run. So, we'll see. But uh, I'm going to go, I think, I'm a little more attacking today. So this is the lineup we have for today. Donnarumma stays in goal. Rodriguez, Romagnoli, Caldada, and Conti in the back four. Biglia and Kessie are in the midfield. I put in Kessie in there simply because it's A, hopefully going to be an easier game. But B, I don't really want the Mazala in this formation. I would rather have it in this 4-1-4-1. I still 4-5-1 V formation, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we are going to push Chalanoglu up. And we're going to put Higuain at the top. So Brun Larson, Chalanoglu, and Bonaventura in the attacking mids. And Higuain up top, like I just said. Couple of notes for players. Strinich has put up a, a freaking shitstorm in this locker room. And he wants game time. I, I basically told him, you know, you can get some here and there, but he he wants game time every day, every game. And I said, You're not gonna get that. And he was pissed. And so a lot of a couple of other other players are pissed as well. And it's I mean, Rodriguez is there. He's better than Strinich. What am I supposed to do? You just came back from a undisclosed, you know, injury that I had to go on to YouTube to figure out what the hell you you guys had an issue with. So, but he's pissed. He wants out. Um, he is wanted by Sevilla. So, I am once the transfer window opens, I am going to get rid of him, and I just hope never to see him again. The other issue that I'm having is I'm getting a lot of reports from my assistant coach saying so and so player looks tired. I think he needs to rest. Okay, fine. So you go and tell him, I'm going to rest you for a week, you know, because you look tired, blah, blah, blah. And they say, oh, thank you so much. That's a great idea. But then after like the third time you tell them I'm going to rest you, because they keep coming back, they'll rest for a day, play for a couple of days, 
rest for a day, play for a couple of days. But after like the third time, they're like, why are you coming and telling me? I know this already. Screw you. Rodriguez is that player. Want to kill him. Uh, the other thing is, if you don't, if you rest him for a day or for a game and you don't play him in the next two games, he gets pissed off. He's like, uh, um, why are you not playing me? Well, because you fucking wanted a rest. I, I'm just annoyed that, and I'm guessing it's the game, you know, I want to rest. Oh, you get to rest me? Okay, fine. I love that. That's a great idea. And then you rest him for two games. Why am I rested for so long? It's like, just man up and shut the fuck up and play. So, submitting this team. I'm getting off on like a negative vibe here, so I got to stop. But they are very, you know, defensive minded. So, I'm hoping that they're in 19, that we can break through. Everyone seems pretty, or fairly happy with that. So, let's get to this tunnel. Let's move on. So, Conti steals it. Kessie, Brun Larson up to Chanaloglu, but nobody's forward. Back to Kessie. Biglia, are we playing... Positive, yeah. So let's keep it positive. Biglia up to Kessie. Over to Brun Larson, who crosses it into nobody. Kessie, though. Yes! Good job, Kessie. Brun Larson has been really picking it up since he came back from injury. Very excited about that. Frank Kessie gets his second goal of the season. So Kessie up to Larson. Brun, who... Taps it back into Kessie, who just uh, it's these defenders right here. No idea what you guys are doing, because there was a clear channel right down. So we are up in ten minutes, one nil. So leave all that. Chalanoglu with a corner, and that is Caldara wins a penalty. Uh, is it a Lucas Bigley will take the penalty? That's fine. He's been doing fairly well with the pens. So he steps up. Oh, why are you kicking it right at him? Why? Bigley is not going to be taking pens much anymore. <laughs> wow, how deep was this dude? How, was he standing like back here? That's crazy. But video replay does show it's not a goal. Four shots, three on target to their one and one. So 20 minutes in, Conti with the throw in. Kessie, another penalty or no? Oh, video, uh, VAR. The video assistant referee has been called upon to review the decision. And VAR says, I, I don't know, what does it say? Nothing? Oh, so it's a, okay, free kick right outside the box. Chalanoglu to Brun Larson. Son, you got to get the headers on. You're right in front of goal. 24 minutes in. So Rodriguez steals it over to Biglia, up to Kessie, working up the pitch nicely. Not a lot in support. Brun Larson, though, missing out on that ball. Chanaloglu into the center, boots it into the... No, right over the bar. Right over the bar. Oh, okay, so anxious, nervous. That's what I like seeing on the other, the opposite team. Seven shots, four on target, 30 minutes in. Coming at half to Higuain. Swear to God, he he started picking it up a little. He got a goal or a couple of goals into... Oh, and by the way, whenever I see has been booked, we might want to tell him to ease off tackles. I am now going with it because they're always getting red cards. They haven't gotten a red card in a little while, thankfully. However, I'm still terrified that they're going to get red cards. But Higuain has not been really doing all that well. And I think he's going to sit on the bench for most of the rest of this season. Because it's just not working. He's not working for us. And I'm not sure why. Kutrone has been picking it up, I have to say. Uh, not 100%. Still kind of every now and again going back to that Chalanoglu as the almost shadow striker type. With There's no shadowing, but I'm not really going with that striker type of formation. But I don't know. I don't know what to do. Do I get a striker in you know, a couple of days. I've got the midfielder. I think I've got that down pat. Um, okay. I've got, I need, they keep wanting me to get Gonzalez from AC, not AC Milan, from Atletico. <laughs> what the hell was that? What were you guys doing? Good job, Kessie, though. Oh my word. Look at this. 
So a throw in from Conti, who I didn't even know how to yellow card. What was this defender doing? And then what are these two defenders doing? Simich and Vicari. And Kessie just into the back of the net. 2-0. That's that's pretty fantastic right there. Uh Higuain though. Pause. Can I pause? Thank you. What I, my plan is right now is to probably go through all of January, get my transfers done for the Friday episode. Uh just to have it ready and done and what is that? But but have it ready and, and over with. So I'll have a probably a longer episode then just to get that information out of the way. Well, whatever. I'll take it. I can't really phase you guys too much with some bitching, but... So Conti brings it up, t- misses a tackle. Was that an own goal by Juru? Juru. Oh, no, Bonaventura, if I could read. So fantastic cross, though, by Conti. Brings it up, breaks a tackle, pat- just crosses the hell out of it, and then Bonaventura gets his head on it. He's been doing a lot of headers, skying it over the bar. And I've been noticing that a lot of uh, corner kicks, when it goes into a person, it just, nobody can get it on goal. So it's either over the goal or to another player uh, that, or to an opposite player and just bangs it out. So Biglia can come out now. Rodriguez. Oh, the bend though. I, I can't get enough of that bend. The bend of the ball is just insane. I love it. I do love it. But Lazari is able to keep hold of the ball. Crosses it in to Flukari. Oh, thank goodness. Keeping that clean sheet alive is what we need to do. Brune Larson at a 70%. Let's uh, pause it there, kill some time, and bring on Douchebaggeroni. Brune Larson gets a yellow <laughs> right as he's leaving. Whatever. So Halilovich comes in for four minutes. That's pretty much... I I was in love with him at the beginning. Then he had some issues in the middle. He started having some actually good games. Oh, wow. That was a great shot. But he started having some good games, and then he fell off again. And so I guess he's really a hit-or-miss player. Maybe for another couple years, we'll see. I don't know. But we've got a minute left. We are up 3-0. But this is the time killing I I can stand. I... Don't I can't stand it when they're just sitting there with the ball, waiting, waiting, waiting on the sidelines, and then finally throw it. No surprise at all. We said before the match that Milan should win comfortably, and they proved that here today, winning a margin of three goals. I cannot read, I swear to God. Another clean sheet. Loving this. So Lazio, Bayern, I will probably go through... I've already done Frozen One. Maybe I should bring it back to the Inter game um, and see how we do there. Sadly, that is after Juventus. But I think I need to make amends with this Inter match from this. I don't even want to see it. That shitty beginning, (laughs) that first match of the season. So I think that's where I'm going to bring it. It will be uh, right before the close of the transfer window. So after that, we'll see. Then I'll probably get you the partisan game for Monday's episode, I guess. So and then we'll see. Maybe two episodes left. Uh, I am definitely planning on doing Fulham for the full release. It may not start until after this season ends because I really want to finish the season and just see how we do. So that's where it ends. So thank you so much for watching as always. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Like, subscribe, all that notification stuff. Uh, Definitely let me know what you think. You know, if you have any thoughts on who I should bring in, definitely let me know. And we'll see. So thank you so much for watching. Take care and enjoy.